Now I'd like to welcome Kathy Clotes guest to my virtual living room. Kathy is a well-known business storytelling strategist, an author, a speaker, and a comedian. Founder of Keeping It Human, a company that helps organizations turn marketing speak into compelling human stories. Kathy has her MBA from Berkeley and her MLA from Stanford. She's an avid podcaster, blogger, and the author of three books. With a title like Stop Boring Me, you are in for a fresh look of storytelling. Kathy, I'm honored to present to you the Women's Center Leadership Award for your innovative work as a cutting edge marketer and a champion for corporate transformation. Congratulations. Thank you for the award. It's very much appreciated. Early in my career, I lived an integrated life. I was fairly happy. Then about a year after college, well, that's when the real world came knocking and abruptly so. And that's when who I was, was checked at the door. And that's when I began to lead this dual life. I had my work persona and then I had my after work persona. So many of us do. And that may seem exciting, like I was a spy who worked my day job, corporate job, and then at night, off hours, I'd travel to exotic locations to catch the bad guys. Well, I was working my corporate high-tech job during the day, but in my off hours, I wasn't doing espionage, though I was doing something that a lot of people would find really scary, probably scarier than espionage. I was doing stand-up and improv comedy seven nights a week. And I loved it. I loved it because as a woman in high tech, I could say things I needed to say. And there was a lot of things I wanted to say. And that stage, man, that was freedom to me. And I think we all have that place that represents freedom to us. And at first I brought Funny Kathy to the office and why not? I liked her. She was gregarious. She was outgoing. She loved to laugh. She was fun. She was a truth teller, especially at holiday parties with family. And then pretty quickly I was told that this version of Kathy, this version of who I was, well, wasn't welcome anymore. Yeah, and both men and women said that to me and women especially said that way more. And it took me time to realize that part of the reason that they said it so much to me was they dealt with a lot of stuff. Life was hard for them. So they were projecting their experiences onto me. Then there was a whole list of things that I couldn't do. I was told that I shouldn't do. What to wear, how to act, everything, how to speak. And I would have to look myself every day in the mirror at work, in the restroom, just to face another day. You know that long list of things, ladies, that we have to do, our daily affirmations in the restroom. <sighs> don't laugh too loud. Don't laugh too much. Don't be too ambitious. Don't talk too much. Don't wear this, don't wear that. Oh my gosh. And on and on and on. Now at this time in my life, I was in my twenties. I had really long blonde hair and I like to wear skirts and heels. And I was told not to. I was told that my humor and my femininity would mean that I would not be taken seriously. So yeah, don't dress like that, Kathy, and put your hair up and don't wear heels. And I know I'm not alone on that. There was a literal list of things not to do. And I realized that if I wanted to fit in, I was gonna have to leave who I was in the car, in the parking lot every day before I walked into that office. And so I did. And after work though, corporate Kathy took a back seat and funny Kathy came out to play. Oh man, comedy is where I flourished. Man, I could say anything on stage. I could say anything and as a woman in tech again, there was a lot of things I needed to say and I was gonna say. And it didn't matter if the jokes didn't work because a comedy stage is a living laboratory. It's where we get to experiment. We get to try new things. We get to fail and it's okay. And it helped me find my voice. It was amazing. And then improv stages, well, you're never wrong in improv. When you make a big bold choice, your team, Yes, ands you. 
That means whatever choice you make is right. Think about that. Think about being in a culture where you can't fail, where whatever you say is right and somebody will back you up. That was improv and it was beautiful. I came alive there. I was funny, Kathy, with the people I trusted and people who knew me where I felt safe. And then after the stages, yeah, I stuffed myself back into that corporate Kathy suit when I showed up at work the next day. And I was getting promoted as long as I bought into this version of Kathy, the one that everybody approved of, right? But I couldn't be smart and funny Kathy. I had to be smart or funny Kathy because that's the version they wanted, not both at the same time. And I became the world's biggest people pleaser. Like I was visibly people pleasing from space. You could see it from space. And I got good at it too. I was really good at it. And after seven years of trying to fit in and leaving parts of myself at the door every day, I was miserable. I was deeply unhappy. And a coworker that had known me for many years pulled me aside one day and he said, I've known you for a long time. You are funny. You are all these things. You are not that here. What happened? And it hit me. I no longer recognized myself. I didn't know who I was because I had compartmentalized who I was and given pieces away just to try and fit in. And they were right. I had bought into this tragedy of or funny or smart, this or that, whatever the or is for you. I had bought into that for me. So I did at that moment what any reasonable woman in tech would do. I walked right into the women's restroom and I had a bathroom floor cry, an ugly cry, right? Sometimes it was the stairwell on this particular day, it was the <laughs> women's restroom. I don't know why it's always a women's restroom, but it is. I think it's because we feel safe there. We're not judged. We can be our authentic, ugly cry selves. But this was a soul crushing, oh God, why, oh why? Why is this so hard? Mascara running all over my face, cry. It was from my soul. And now it's at home, right? Now we're having ugly cries at home because of COVID and maybe it's under your desk, no judgment. <laughs> We've all been there. I mean, who hasn't had a bathroom breakdown moment? But I grieved in that moment for who I could have been because I could have been happier, more confident. I could have been more whole had I just not kept these two worlds separate. I could have been more effective for myself and for others. Then I spent all my 20s, literally all my 20s, playing by rules that I didn't create, that were designed for me just to make other people comfortable at the expense of my own comfortability. And the worst part, I still did not belong. So after my meltdown, I picked myself up, I dusted myself off, went back to that mirror, the mirror that I put my daily affirmations in, and I made a vow. I made a vow right then and there that I was gonna be more of who I am, who I was before the world told me who I should be. That version of me right after college, that authentic me to be fully me in my soul. And of course, as I'm getting ready to leave, I look down and there is a string of toilet paper sticking to the heel of my shoe. <laughs> and we have to find levity in these moments, but it's like, God, please just leave me one little ounce, little shred of dignity. <laughs> toilet paper, I mean, really? But improvisation helped me realize that the antidote to this fragmented self, to the whole lie about or, was Andy. Andy and all of who I am. So I started bringing more of who I was back into work. And I wish I could tell you that people liked this new version and everybody liked it, but they didn't. And it was totally okay because I did. I was happy for the first time in a long time. And I became braver, bolder, funnier. And I was more effective for myself. And because of that, I was more effective for others. Until, until finally one day, one day, a boss pulled me aside, a new boss, had moved out of a different department and he promoted me 
And he said, your humor is your superpower. Why would you hide it? And I told him the story of what people had said. And he said, they're not you. Don't listen to what other people do. They're not you. Absolutely. And then finally, I got to say the words that every woman in high tech longs to say with a promotion. I have 10 men under me. <laughs> yes. It was awesome. And then about a year later, I had another bathroom moment come full circle. And it's always a bathroom. I don't know why there's a law somewhere about bathroom revelations, but it's true. It's always a bathroom. And I, I walked out to wash my hands from the stall and a new hire, a woman from Eritrea, she walked over to me and she said, I love your laugh. And I love that you don't look around first to see who's laughing before you laugh. And she said, where I'm from, I was raised not to laugh too much or laugh too loud. There it was, there it was. And I realized in this moment that she and I were raised two worlds away from each other, but she and I were not different. She was my soul sister in that moment. And I know that I have a lot of soul brothers and soul sisters out here. who are gonna watch this, you're watching this and you relate because you too have had to leave a part of who you are at the door before going to work. You too have spent many years oaring yourself just to try to fit in. I know that. But so many of us fear being rejected. We, we make these choices about who we're gonna be every day and how much of ourselves to show and to whom we show these sides of ourselves. I mean, how many of you have had an idea that you've never voiced because you were afraid of what people thought? You were afraid to bring your whole self to bear. We've all done it. Well, that's not belonging. That's not fitting in. And Brene Brown says that becoming, fitting in is becoming who you think you need to be, just to be accepted. Fitting in is becoming who you think you need to be, to be accepted. And the truth is I never fully fit in. I never felt okay about it. And that's the real tragedy of war. When we or our life, that you fragment yourself so completely to try and fit in and you still never fully belong. So if you're oaring yourself, you're robbing the world of your genius. I'm gonna age myself here, but like Ario Speedwagon says, you know, throw away the oars forever. <laughs> Look, we have some really big problems in this world to solve and we're not gonna do it unless we lead from every part of our soul. And that means Andy. So when you say yes and to others, you can stay in integrity while saying yes and to yourself. But it starts with you. Yes, Andy, you first. An improv instructor that I had in Chicago, one of my favorite people on the planet, used to say to me a lot, don't drop your shit. <laughs> because when you yes and who you are and what you believe, you own your power with integrity. Now, imagining you yes and yourself, and you say yes to somebody else, it's the best of who you are married to what, the best of somebody else and their idea. So there's three parts to yes and. Yes, it's listening. And then we accept the reality we have. Number two, we accept it. And then number three, we add and add on to move the scene forward. Look, COVID happened. We didn't see COVID coming. We can argue, we don't have to like it, but it happened. So all we can do in this moment is yes and the reality that we have and add on to that, to move it forward. And many of you have, you've had to find a way to be resilient, to adapt, to pivot because we had no choice. And that can bring out the best in who we are. And leaders who yes and, they say yes to all the buckets, all of who they are. Because leaders who yes and are playful, they're humorous, they're funny, they lead with curiosity and integrity. And the best part about being fully you and embracing who you are is that you send up flares to the world that says, this is who I am, unapologetically. And that's how you attract your people. 
and and is how we become ourselves and move ideas forward. It's how we bring our whole selves to work. And I'm now a company founder and a storyteller. I spent 15 years in high tech. And for 10 of those years, I led marketing and communications teams. And I've spent almost two and a half decades on stages doing comedy and improvisation. And today I am so fortunate. I get to help leaders uncover more of who they are and lean into that truth. And I help leaders and teams and companies all over learn to say yes and, so they can do more, be more. Imagine bringing all of who you are every day to work to solve big problems and move your big vision of the world forward. That's what yes and does. It creates psychological safety. Imagine if you yes anded yourself and showed up for other people so they could yes and themselves too at work. That's change, that's real change. And yes, and organizations have people that laugh out loud. They live boldly and they embrace their imperfections because that is truly human. That's a human organization. And the truth is more clear and worth fighting for when you yes and yourself, because that's where it starts. It starts there and it ripples outward. The world needs your voice. And that power can only come when you yes and yourself unapologetically. That you, that real version of you, that is your birthright. Not some fake version of you. Now, it doesn't mean you have to tell everybody your deep secrets. No one is entitled to that. But it does mean showing up to embrace all parts of who you are. All of your talents. Look, life is like the hokey pokey. You got to put your whole ass in and damn right, you got to shake it all about. Imagine the collective force everywhere of women whole assing their lives in every way. That vibrational frequency is enough to shatter glass ceilings, a lot of them. I'm going to leave you with this. Where are you not showing up as your full self? And what might that be costing you? and everybody around you. Adventure is calling you to use your voice to change the world. And I hope you answer that call by yes anding yourself first. Thank you. Oh, Kathy, what a powerful message about bringing your whole self into everything you do in life. You know, it, it made me reflect on Carl Jung's idea of the archetypes. We are such complex beings and how we show up and which of our archetypes steps forward in a situation is so, so very complex. Yeah, absolutely. We are complex animals and we belong in multiple buckets. And I think the, the greatest injustice we do to ourselves that it happens everywhere is this or we've bought into or. And I think we don't unlock our full potential until we and, until we learn to paint with all the brushes and all the buckets. And that's where I think the real growth lies. And that's where I think being our whole selves and bringing our whole selves to work lies. I think, I think you was right. <laughs> well, I, for one, am going to make yes and a new mantra. As I look in the mirror and I try to sort something out from now on, I'm going to play that yes and and allow my voice to come up and help me see what that next step and is. Really, really powerful. Thank you so much, Kathy. We so appreciate having you here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much.